Me think, why swing at many pitches when few do trick? Luckily, the Guardians said just enough and did just enough to steal victory from the jaws of defeat against the New York Yankees. Uh, I guess they didn't realize the game started at 9 o'clock, but the Guardians showed up and we're here to talk about it. And thank God they won that game because it could have been a disaster. Otherwise, you could have heard a very different podcast, but that one will exist in some other time continuum that's stuck in the Bronx. You are Locked On Guardians, your daily podcast on the Cleveland Guardians, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team, every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Lockdown Guardians. I'm one of your two co-hosts, Jeff, over there, Justin. I want to thank you for making Lockdown Guardians your first listen today and every day, wherever it is you get podcasts. I want to thank and uh, I want to thank Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. And then uh, I just do want to say, like, I feel like I have some kind of level of an emo- emotional abuse with this team in the early going because I was just sitting there in the ninth inning, listening to the game, doing dishes, uh, getting some things put together. Like, here comes a double play. Uh, oh, hey, no, you know, it's uh, it's an error. Oh, uh, here comes uh, Jose. What's, what's going to go wrong? Oh, we reach base. Well, uh, Josh Naylor is going to hit into a double play now because we've seen how this has gone this year. No, oh, he got on. So jo- Josh Bell going to – no, hey, he got on. A- and I just kept waiting for something to go wrong, and it just didn't. But I was totally like in full-on defensive mode did this whole – ninth inning but then again when you spend eight innings and like i said i think the best little nugget uh that's not buried is the fact they face six pitches in the sixth seven pitches in the seventh and eight pitches in the eighth that's terrible but it's hilarious uh when you win uh domingo herman had never pitched a complete game in the majors he had pitched one during his minor league career uh never had any shutouts 88 pitches Thank you, Aaron Boone. I mean, I get the logic. Like, is there a world where you don't want to face a, like, you know, you're you're always thinking Clay Holmes is going to be a tougher matchup. Luckily, he just didn't have it tonight. But it just, what a weird game. One hit in the ninth. And then you could have gone to bed and come back later. You'd have missed Quantrell be great. But my goodness, this was, (laughs) it, it turned into a fun one. But I spent most of this game just stewing. Yeah, that's that's the Guardians didn't even have time to stew with how quick the game was going. I mean, they they were not patient at all, as you said. Six in the six pitches in the sixth, seven in the seventh, eight in the eighth. And before that, it was even it was just as bad. I mean, they saw eleven in the first, nine in the second, fourteen in the third, eleven in the fourth. They saw sixteen in the fifth, which that was their best inning, um, at least in terms of pitches seen, but the approach was just so bad. They could not figure out Domingo Herman's curveball. Nine nine swings and misses against twenty two of them. Uh, thanks to Aaron Boone for having no feel for his team. Again, I feel like Aaron Boone continues to cost his team some games. Uh, I'm trying to think, did they did the, the Yankees lose that meltdown game? No, I think they came back and won because that was a disaster ending. That was the day game where Boone Boone got tossed. I think the Yankees came back and won that game. Unfortunately, yeah, but, they uh, won. They won that one. Even though, like, no, or did they? I have to go back and look. I'll I'll look uh, it up. But um, I think, you know, we had a lot of salty. uh, Well, Aaron Boone was very salty that day. And I know everyone. And the Yankees fans are like, it's the wrong call. It's the wrong call. It's like, we explained why it, why it was the fine, the right call. But it's also because the TV was telling them it's the wrong call. So they were just, uh, you know, saying everything that. uh, Do whatever the TV tells you to think, right? That's how, that's how we get in a lot of trouble anyway. um, But the cardiac kids were alive tonight. That was important. Like, like I Start said, off before, May on a winning note. Yes. Oh, that was going to be my open. You've ruined it. I just, it's going to be May because everyone uses that stupid in sync yeah. meme on, on May 1st. But uh, Ahmed Rosario uh, got a hit in his first yeah, I was, bat of I May. Was more, more thinking like May's busting out all over, which is just uh, more, I really shows how old I am. I'm going for Broadway. You're going for in sync, even though in sync was definitely more probably lined up with my lifetime than yours with our age gap. But hey, it's fine. No, I was, hey, I, I'm gonna, I think I was in high school. I shouldn't have been this podcast. I went to an instant contest as a kid or a concert as a kid. So I don't want to admit that on this podcast, but I just did. Um, but this was, you know, 
Yeah. You said it was a fun, it was a fun ninth inning. It wasn't a fun game. It was a fun ninth inning because the guardians finally figure out what they do best. They, they took some pitches. They got on with, uh, you know, they, they, and that Rosario reached because of his speed cost it caused an error. They called that an error. I thought he was going to be safe anyway, but you know, they, they reached because of their speed. They were putting the ball in play. They were patient. They saw pitches. They finally did, you know, the things that they are good at doing. It just took them eight innings to get there. So, you know, they came back on Saturday with good offense and then, then they blew that game, which they kind of, like I guess they already had a feeling they were going to, but, you know, they finally showed up. I'm not saying they haven't done this all year. We've seen flashes, but and it wasn't like it was an offensive explosion. But, you know, they they finally were The Yankees did win that game. Just side note. Double check. Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure they did. I, I, I was pretty sure they did. But they frustrated the Yankees in the ninth inning. They got on with singles. They got on with speed. They were patient. That's what this team has to do to win. And it feels like they had just gotten away from that. So it was good to see them do that late in a game where – they had no business winning, and I don't think they would have won if Aaron Boone had kept him. I mean, Domingo Mount only had 88 pitches, and this this Yankee lineup stinks. Like it's bad. I know. I know people are gonna say, "Oh, the Guardians don't have room to talk." Their lineup stinks too. But the Yankees and the Guardians are on different planes. The Guardian, the Yankees have a 200 million dollar payroll, and I know they're missing their MVP and their best player to an injury. But I'm sorry, you're you're the Yankees. Everyone talks about 27 rings and. Um, they fix Gio Urshela and they they do all these things off. They do all these things with coaching and and analytics because they can afford the most expensive analytics department. I'm sorry, you should be able to put together a better lineup than than uh, Jose Trevino and Jake Bauer. Really yeah, they don't. And I mean, yeah, right. and that's and that's what we talked about the first time they came through. I mean, you go through. You know what killed him tonight, right? Is uh, no Franchi Cordero? Is he like single handedly yeah. carried the Yanks to victory and then completely the fell time. apart after that weekend? He yeah, was sent down the when, leagues for extra yeah, week. Yeah, he was uh he was sent down with Bowers coming up. But yeah, when you're when you're being kept together with Cordero and Bowers and Willie Calhoun, like that is not good signs. And that is again, they just don't have any depth and they traded away a lot of their upper minors depth. And if we're being honest, their draft record is you know, for all their success, um, you know, they went and got Matt Blake for a reason. This team could not develop a pitcher to save their life. Uh, there's all sorts of health issues, and that's a big thing. And they are, I mean, they've got just so many guys Donaldson, Bader, Judge, Stanton, all on the disabled list. That's an entire outfield. Gil, Montes, Ron, Rodon, Seravino, Scott Efros, Tommy uh, Kaline, Jonathan Luizinga, Lou Trevino. I mean, that's. Yeah, I mean, they have more than most teams can overcome, but at the same time, their current roster is still uh, more expensive than Cleveland's. So you have to do some degree of internal stuff. And like, I would argue, instead of running out the Franchi Corderos, who we know, yeah, he was great against Cleveland. We get, like They should be taking more of those flyers on those um, guys who perform really well but don't have the athletic tools. Go the other way. See if you can find the next, um, you, know, uh, you know, Casey Blake type. Yeah, I agree. Definitely. Um, this is a game the Guardians should have won, even though Cal Cronchel doesn't have a great history against um, the Yankees, especially going back to the playoffs last year. They didn't have a great lineup, and it's just, it was, a, I don't want to say it's a mismatch because the Guardians are struggling, but this is a game you really wanted to have just because of how, how the rosters are shaping up right now. And, and you need these wins because you haven't played a good series in a while. I mean, look, they won the first game against Boston. They have, that's the first time they won the first game of a series, except for Boston. The last time they did that was against Washington. They lost the first game against Miami and Colorado. Yeah. So um, that's, you know, I guess that's a good start for them. We'll see how they follow it up, but it's a game you really wanted to have. I know regular season wins, um, you know, overblow too many of them, but I don't want to say this is the biggest win of the year. Cause it's not, but, it's one of the biggest wins of the year to me because they looked like crap early on and they didn't, they didn't fare well against the pitcher who really hasn't had a great major league track record and their approach was bad. They've been playing bad and the fact they're able to pull the rabbit out of their hat with this one. And they, like I said, they did it doing the things they're good at doing. They're using their speed, using their contact, being patient finally. Cause look, they, I know you tweeted that this looks like the guardians of last year who didn't take a lot of pitches because they didn't this year or last year and they didn't this game, but 
they've been better at taking walks this season, mostly because of Josh Bell walking yeah. more and Zanino. and Zanino. But that's and that's part of why they're. I know everyone wants wants and Bell who and walked Zanino. tonight in the ninth. Zanino, yeah, and Bell and and Bell, yeah, like that's right. where the difference is. Like that, those two are almost single handedly elevating this team's profile because right. I mean, you talk about those innings where it's like first pitch Ahmed line out first pitch, you know, uh, nailer line out. And that's part of the problem too, with, with nailer right now. It's like, he, he needs to be a little bit more selective. He was a guy who walked at a higher percentage than some of the other guys a year ago, but I think we saw the, the lineup changes. I mean, it, we should, we'll come back and, and talk about that Zanino at bat in after the break, but like that at bat is one we got to discuss because it's a walk, but it's, it's a game winning walk. And like, I mean, that was a, that was a, ballsy at bat, you know, to sit there and, you know, to be down and work his way back. And, you know, that's why he went out and got him. Like he is a lefty killer. He's been okay. Hot take before break. Didn't even mean for a semi rhyme there. Uh, this, the team's offensive MVP in the first 20 games of the year, Mike Zanino. I do not disagree. And I know, look, everybody wants Bell and Zanino to hit more home runs, and, and they need that from them, absolutely. But you also got them for their plate discipline, too. I know Zanino strikes out a lot. He strikes out a lot because it, there's a lot of swing and miss, but the guy knows how to work a walk. He's always had good walk rates in his career, so is Bell. Those those guys' patience is as much important to their profile as their power is, and it showed tonight, absolutely. So we'll get into Zanino at bat. We'll get into Class A. We'll get into Quantrill. Um, after this quick word. If you're looking for tickets to an upcoming event and you are stressed out about which, how to find them, maybe they're sold out. Maybe you're looking for NHL playoff tickets. Maybe you're looking for NBA playoff tickets. Hey, LeBron is playing the Warriors again. That's interesting. Um, I am going to the Guardians game this Saturday, and I was looking for tickets late because uh, I have a big group going. It's my bachelor party part of it. Um, so I was looking for tickets in a group in an area, and let me tell you, it was tough. But buying tickets to your favorite event shouldn't be stressful. Game time is the fast and easiest way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. They have killer deals on last-minute tickets, and the best price guarantee you can stop stressing over tickets and start getting hyped. For the event, they have flash deals, easy to buy for every event in your area. And if you're like me, you like to see this, the image of where you're sitting at the event. They have images of seat and use, the lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection. Game time is the place for last minute ticket deals. Forget planning months in advance. Game time has tickets, deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. Get exclusive flash deals on tickets for all sports, comedy, music, theater, and more. The game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section or row for less, game time is going to credit you 110% the difference. Snag tickets out, out the stress with the Ga game time app. Download the game time app today. Create an account. Use the promo code locked on MLB for $20 off your first purchase. Term supply again, create an account, redeem code locked on MLB for $20 off. Download the game time app. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And check out our other sponsor, So Rare. That is So Rare, too, is a revolutionary fantasy baseball game and marketplace, transforming owners, fans into owners with officially licensed digital cards featuring players across 30 MLB teams. It's unlike any other fantasy baseball platform out there. So rare games happen twice weekly in a span of a three to four day cycle at the end of the game week. So rare MLB managers rank near the top of their leaderboards can win a variety of rewards, including scarcity cards, merch, game tickets, and signed jerseys, VIP experiences, prizes will depend on competition. So head to so rare.com slash locked on. That's S O R A R E.com to draft your team of free player cards, set your lineup and start competing today to win epic rewards. Again, so rare dot com slash locked on to start playing today and head over to find our buddy at Lex Super on Twitter to help you set up your best so rare lineup. And I want to remind you to check out tomorrow's game, Bybee versus Cole, the most interesting one in the series on Sirius XM. Our good friends go check out the Sirius XM app to check out that game. 
That is going to be a dandy. Uh, you know who else was dandy tonight was Emmanuel Classe. How about that? One of a, it was just a classic Emmanuel Classe outing. He didn't throw any sliders. Um, didn't get any. He got three whiffs on the cutter tonight. He, he struck out a batter. He only threw 12 pitches, uh, two ground outs, and a strikeout. I mean, that was as class A as it gets. Uh, when I go to games with my fiance and her family, we do a little competition at the game where we guess how many pitches uh, Emmanuel Classe is going to throw if he comes in for a save. And routinely, we all guess, you know, 14 or less because he usually gets out of there unless. Hasn't been as good lately. But uh, good to see him go out, and he got a strikeout. Didn't throw the slider, but maybe he didn't need to. But uh, three, six swings against the cutter, three whiffs, three balls in play that weren't very good. I do. I still got to say, I think I feel that's a little bit funny. Like there is a degree of sky is falling with him. I don't know any other pitcher who could lead the league in appearances, have an ERA under two, and a fan base is like he just hasn't been as good. You know, it's it's not, to, and we he hasn't, but like it is kind of funny when you put it in. It's like it's not that it's a small it's sample. No, he's he's the most. Uh, he has the most appearances in baseball, ERA under two, but he's he's trash. Uh, and I don't know who's saying that, but it is kind of funny to look at it that way. But he was, listen, it was. That entire bullpen did its job. It's great that I, I can't remember if I've ever, I know it's happened, but I can't recall a situation like what happened with NEL with the pickoff and throwing one pitch to be uh, right. Didn't NEL just throw one pitch in that inning? That's he, he picks up the win while throwing one pitch. That's it. Well, I don't say it's not what you call a vulture because usually a vulture is the blown save win, but uh, yeah. Hey, You'll take it. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who gets the win. The win is a win. That's important. Um, what I liked over Class A, the the ground out from Gleyber Torres, sixty five miles an hour. The ground ball from Lemayhew, seventy eight miles an hour off the bat. Just you know, inducing weak contact. Sometimes he gets bad a little bit, and and it goes where a defender is not. That's been an issue for him. But the strikeout was good. I don't know, he just looked like himself tonight. That was good. Cal Quantrill. I don't think it's a stretch to say at all. It was the best start of the year for him. Mostly the best, yeah. spring, WBC, all of it. Literally his best outing of 2023, no matter what month it, it is. Yeah. He only got one swing and miss tonight on the curveball, which is like his fourth best pitch. Uh, Again, uh, ironically. Not a good Yankees lineup. Yeah. And I, I don't, I don't want to take anything away from Quantrill because they needed that start from him. Truthfully, they really did. That was important, but I mean, he only got, he didn't, did he even strike a batter out? Uh, he got one in that one. I remember listening to it. He did get a strikeout. But yeah, I mean, listen, IKF was supposed to be a two bench strikeouts, guy. Two strikeouts, Yeah, he, he's starting. It's it's bad. Um, I, 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 I haven't they gone. feel it, bad. I mean, this, yeah, this Yankees team is, well, I thought it was interesting too. Another thing from the broadcast that if you take out Garrett Cole, this starting rotation, who they couldn't touch at all in this game, as the is the second worst starting rotation in baseball this year, like that's how bad you know, and the rest have been. You know, there, there's your your way outdated uh, reference right there. And the rest, comment below. Um, but yeah, no, this is a just a poor team right now in a lot of ways, and you got to beat a team when they're scuffling. And I'm sure that's what Yankees fans are feeling right now too, because Cleveland has been scuffling so poorly right. uh, in the early going. But yeah, I was, did. Let's see Rizzo, Torres, and LeMahieu are the only guys with the runs created plus over a hundred. And give it to Volpe; he's up to a ninety-five. So after, and he had a horrid start when he first began. He so he's he's turning it around. But yeah, everyone else isn't hitting. Yeah, I mean Judge and Stanton are, but they're not playing. So got to beat this team yeah. in these close. Right. Matches. So give Cal credit for going out there and pitching like he did because they needed that start from him and. They had to win that game. So I know people, like you said, the lineup for he was facing wasn't good. And that's what you want from him. But, uh, you know, you got to go out there and do the job. And he did, especially considering he was down 2 nothing for most of the game. And the offense was putting him back out there without much rest. You know, you got the pitch clock that's not getting you a whole lot of rest. And then you've got the offense who is seeing zero pitches per inning. And uh, you're going back out there 30 seconds after you just went back to the dugout. So good for him to to keep it where it was. I know, again, I know not a great lineup, but um, he did his job. And that's, that's yeah. what you need. Cause he hasn't, you know, a lot of him and police sack and, and ha haven't done that. And uh, you need it for tonight. 
And that bat you know, from Sanino, I know you want to talk about. Yeah, it. well, again, that, I, I just want to point out one more thing. I was talking about the pitchers. How about the fact that they only allowed one walk in this game? The six hits for, by New York, just the one walk. Um, Cleveland only had four hits, uh, but and had three walks. So you can kind of see the value of that. Josh Bell with two of them. Uh, so yeah, it's you know you go seven and a third and you allow seven base runners and yeah, the home run got to Quantrill, but that's, that's what you're aiming for in this. That's, you know, you limited people on the base paths. When you do that, you know, you, you get a victory. The Yankees are 15 and 15. Cleveland is 14 and 15. So these are, yeah. Chance to, right, well, to win the series and get talk- back to 500. Right. Yeah. Let's talk about the Zanino at bat and some other stuff that happened today. Um, after this word. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Uh, So listen, I've always been very honest. I'm not someone who wants to hide my own trauma. I I think it's important for, you know, people that because I spent most of my life being embarrassed by my dyslexia, being embarrassed by being ADD and, uh, you know, depression and things like that. And that's why I was like, hey, I have problems with pronunciation because that's part of my disability. And sometimes when you have things like that, uh, the anxiety and the pressure that goes on with trying to, you know, when there when there are, are other outlying reasons, it's nice to have someone to talk to, someone who is not going to judge you and that you know they're not going to judge you because their job is literally to just be someone there to help, to listen. Um, you know, you want to make sure that you have someone you can trust. And that's what BetterHelp is, is there for right now. Um, I think therapy... And just talking to people is always beneficial. And if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suit your schedule. Fill out a questionnaire. You can match with the therapist. If it's not a good match, guess what? You can get a new one, no additional charge. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockdownMLB to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockdownMLB. And also, I want to remind you to uh, check out tomorrow's game on Sirius XM Radio, Bybee versus Cole. It's going to be a fun one. Sure is. We'll get to that in just a moment. Let's talk about this. And you know what, that real quickly, we talked about um, Wandy Peralta for sure last year was the best reliever the, the Yankees had in the playoffs against Cleveland. He shut them down. Yep. And, you know, Zanino fouled off a chain to start that at bat, took three straight balls, fouled off a couple sinkers at three and one. Um, you know, trying to get a hit there. Ended up with this, an eighth-pitch walk. He had the big hit against Boston over the weekend. I they lost that game, but he, he's the one who gave him the lead. Um, his at-bats lately have been fantastic. He, I know he struck out a couple times tonight. That was rough, but the Guardians as a whole just had a very poor approach. Uh, I'd like the season, you know, hit higher in the lineup against left-handers. We'll see if that ever comes to fruition. Who knows? Um, I, thought, just a strong Honestly, at-bat. I and, thought he should be the fourth hitter against lefties. That was my call before the year, and I'll, I'll stand by Yeah. It. I don't disagree with you at all. Um, I think it does help a little bit. Zanino playing in the in, in Yankee Stadium, seeing the Yankees. I, I can't recall how long Juan Peralta has been there in terms of how good of a reliever he is, but um, surely he's seen Peralta before, and I'm sure that helped. But that situation, it's super easy given how how bad the Guardians were offensively, how frustrated they were, how desperate they were to score a run in that, in that situation. Um and it was two outs, nonetheless. You know, it was, mm-hmm. it was not not a good situation. Very easy to try to do too much right there and try to get the hit and win the game. Um, you know, which is I think kind of like what it felt like happened with Andres right before him. Like That's Andres, what I was say, yeah, yeah. I mean, he was three strikes out on three pitches, and the third yeah, one's not and, even remotely close. Yeah. So yeah, Andres showed it's very easy for to show what could happen in that situation. So credit to Zanino for for how good that at bat was. Cause it's very easy to, to let that happen. And real quick, I want to show the win probability of this game. So when miles straw struck out in the ninth inning with one, so with one out and the guardians are down two nothing miles straw uh, strikes out to lead off the inning that gave the Yankees a 96, <laughs> excuse me, 0.7 win just showing the probability there. Yeah. 96%. Yeah. When Cleveland was at 3.4 right if you wanted the other side. 3.4 percent. Yeah, chance. it was pretty it was pretty bad. So the, the Yankees literally had this in the bag after the straw strikeout. So when we say they they snatched victory from the jaws of defeat, they truly did. 
Um, that's how improbable this game was. So, hey, credit them for the ninth inning for yeah. finally figuring out how to eight play pitches, Guardians too. baseball. Yeah, you know, fouled off multiple ones. Was oh, and it's like especially after you fouled out multiple pitches. In my mind, I feel like a lot of guys tend to be a little more swing happy, and you know that last pitch wasn't in. He didn't even swing. If you look at it, even the ones that he swung on, they were all borderline pitches. Like he was smart. He was controlled, and you know he's right now captain clutch for this team. Uh, in this past week. So wasn't that bad by him uh, to just you know, be able to control the zone. It, it was, it's yeah. huge. Cause then, you know, <laughs> I don't know about you, but when they pinch hit for Oscar Gonzalez, I was like, it's probably the right call, but oof, I don't feel, and then, you know, he promptly flies out and you're like, okay. Yeah. They, mm-hmm. And luckily they, again, this was a game they had no business winning, but it is funny to see like Gonzalez, three pitches, Jimenez, three pitches, straw, four pitches. Um, the, where the where they were patient and where they weren't patient in this one, um, but overall, uh, you gotta love. The, it's a victory, and you gotta love a victory like this where they they. I mean, it, it feels like it could be one of those games where you feel a momentum shift for a team. Hopefully, hopefully that's the case. They certainly need it after the lackluster finish in Boston over the weekend and just April in general. All right, any final thoughts on the game before we move on no, to the we, news of the let, day? Yeah, let's let's do the first uh, the guard. Oh, I was going to say very well, we'll do this one first. And uh, why Fry? Um, if you're going to carry three catchers, David Fry is probably always the more logical one, right? Because he gives you the ability to let a Zanino DH, let a Zanino, you know, shift a roll. You still have to and or, you know, his flexibility, his ability to hit lefties, which this team can't do. I wonder how much of this has more to do with his ability to be a lefty masher as much as catch, play first, play third. If you want a Naylor platoon caddy, David Fry makes a lot of sense while also giving you flexibility on this roster. It's not like you were using uh, Melbus anyways. I think I love this move. I think it's a great move. They need some more help versus lefties. They need some more depth. And he also still gives you everything you could you know, want with a third catcher. He's not as good defensively, but you don't need your third catcher to be a star. No, and and Valoria wasn't playing anyway, so he was essentially a dead spot on the roster. Like you were playing with a twenty-five man roster because you were keeping him there as a safety blanket. And if, if you've noticed, Tito has 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 not not wanted to use Zanino on his days off. So when they catch Gallagher they use Valoria behind Gallagher and Zanino sits. They want to give him days off. And I think that's because of the injury last year and wanting to build him up. And, and just that injury is, is a little bit risky. It's an injury that, you know, has a history of uh, re- not only reoccurring, but it's just a tricky injury. So they're trying to build him back up. They're trying to protect him and they need him because he's obviously been great for this lineup. I, defensively, that's a, another conversation. But having Fry here allows them to take take more use of their roster a better it's a better inventory use valoria could only catch he had no offensive value great defender fry is not a good defensive catcher i don't think he's a bad defensive catcher i think valoria for sure is a good one maybe fry is like he's below average I he, right i mean he's not even average worse, i don't know if he could be worse than zanino because zanino's not good this yeah. year no zanino's not fry, good, but- yeah, Fry Fry has a good arm. Um, Zanino had a good arm. He still does a good arm. Accuracy is the issue, and also uh, it's just hard to throw runners out unless you're Connor Wong. Apparently, hey, point to Jeff. Um, but now, like you said, Fry can play first base against lefties. You don't have to miscast Gabriel Arias as your lefty masher playing first base because he's not that guy. I don't know how this could really poorly affect Gabriel Arias's playing time because mm-hmm. that seemed to be the only place it was coming from. So I do worry about that, but Fry makes a lot of sense. Uh, in the minors, 2021, between AA and AAA, 76 at-bats, 988 OPS against lefties. 2022, got off to a slow start last year, uh, 812 OPS overall against lefties and 96 at-bats. This year, 880 OPS against lefty and 33 at-bats. The guy has consistently done well against lefties. The Guardians need that help. And I'm not going to say he's the savior against lefties. They're, they probably are still going to have problems. But it's going to let uh, Naylor play, honestly. It's, as much as right, we, you and a, I talk about, they're not they're not going to platoon Naylor as much as they should. Um, maybe now. they will now, though, with this move. Maybe they will. And, you know, let's say you're facing a lefty and you put Fry at first base and Zanino catches and you're like, oh, 
We want a pinch run for Zanino, so we have to bring Gallagher in. If Fry is your first baseman, and, and God forbid something happens to Gallagher, you move Arias to first base or Naylor to first base, whatever you want, Bell, whatever you do. You move Fry behind the plate. Fry is your safety blanket catcher. That's all he has to be. They haven't let him catch this year at all. They barely let him catch last year, but he can do it. So he's kind of like a utility player who can catch. He's not really a third catcher. Um, it's a good situation. I don't know. It might be hard for him to find playing time. or might be fi- hard for him to find a groove if all they do is play him against lefties at first base. But it's an improvement on the roster spot from what they did initially. I thought they should have done this out of spring training. Um, I don't know how well it's going to go for him if he doesn't play very often, but I like the move and I think it, it's got potential. It's better than what they were doing. So let's, let's give him at least uh, yeah. a hand, like a, let's be happy for the fact they improved their roster, at least the ability to maneuver it better if they need to. And if you're curious, he came over as the player to be named later for JC Mejia when they let Mejia go. And why was he a player to be named later? Well, I think he was, they were, Curious to see if he'd pass through the rule five. Then there was no rule five, so he was named. Uh, yeah. So we we're getting to see the return for JC Mejia before we have found out the return for Owen Miller. Um, I don't know <laughs> if we will ever find out what the return for Owen Miller. It's was. Owen Miller. Owen Miller will be back in Cleveland at some point. <laughs> I don't know. It's that's it's crazy um, to me that we are we are like six months out. It's not quite six months. It's like three months out. We still don't know. And then uh, before we get into this, uh, Pilkington. I just want to throw out. I know this came up. Oh. Uh, Pilkington was traded for cash. Um, I was disappointed by the number of people that uh, didn't have headlines about DVAX pay uh, money for Pilk, you know, m- uh, Pilk money. Uh, but, you know, we were talking off air yesterday that Diamondbacks have done a great job with uh, Kyle Nelson, uh, former uh, college teammate of Shane Bieber. So, hey, another lefty and interesting guy and uh, return for Cesar Hernandez. So another uh, trade piece. But yeah, I, you and I both said someone would claim him. They figured out a trade. Who knows how much money ever goes in one of those deals. But uh, best of luck to him. And that uh, that bullpen is atrocious. And they got Carlos Vargas they just sent down. So he's got a chance to, to he was sent to AAA, but he's got a chance to help that team, I think. Yeah, not surprising he got claimed. It makes the pitching depth in Cleveland very shaky. So um, if this tells you anything, they, they really wanted Bybee on the roster because, uh, well, they had, they know they had to, but this tells you a lot about where they're at with these guys because they sacrificed pitching depth to do that versus, you know, neighbors Florida, who they did it a day later with, with David Fry. It's interesting. Um, back in Cleveland, Sam Henches did not pitch on Sunday like he was supposed to for Columbus because of the rain out. And I thought they'd probably have, have him get one more relief outing. So he's going to pitch Tuesday. Yeah, the plan is going to be back on Thursday. That's good news for this bullpen. Thank goodness. Uh, let's hope the outing goes well on Tuesday, but not surprised they wanted to get one more. Uh, I'm still going to speculate, Not you know, not wishing anything bad for Peyton Battenfield, but I think that's the writing yeah. on the wall for this move. Um, hey, Tuesday on Sirius XM, it is Tanner Bybee versus Garrett Cole. This is why winning this Monday matchup against the Yankees was, I'm not saying it was so important because it's not like it's a playoff series, but um, you know, you're facing Clark Schmidt on Thursday, on Wednesday. Um, so you could have taken Monday and Wednesday, but Hey, now you've got a win in the bank against the Yankees in the series. And now you've got, dare I say it? Ace versus ace. No, Shane Bieber's still the ace, but Tanner Bybee versus Garrett Cole. I, I don't know how you could want anything more. Uh, is the guardians offense going to show up? I don't know. They slept walk through the first eight innings of the game on Monday and they have historically not done very well against Garrett Cole. If you want to bet on one thing, uh, Josh Naylor home run, right? Go put a a prop bet on Josh Naylor getting a home run off of Garrett Cole. Hopefully we'll see how that goes. That'll be fun, but uh, this should be a lot of fun. I am looking forward to this very much. I, I'm going to go see the captains play this week. And I specifically um, said I was not going to go Tuesday. So I could be home to watch Bybee versus Cole and then talk about it with you, Jeff. Well, it'll be fun. I uh, want to thank you all for listening, reading and reviewing. Uh, it helps. Uh, we did get a review. Um, I will read it on some. I'll give a shout out tomorrow. Um, very kind review on iTunes. Uh, in terms of our everydayers, I keep adding to the list. and I forgot to do this yesterday. Um, so I should do it today, which as we're trying to wind down. Uh, let's see. Who have I not gone through and mentioned in this list format here? Uh, Heminger. MMA, Dave, and William Wakefield. Just kind of working my way down this list. I had, had you on here twice, Heminger. 
But uh, thank you to all of our everydayers commenting, liking, downloading. It is huge for a show like ours. Um, and make sure you're doing that. We fell out of the top 100 baseball podcasts this week. I'll be honest. So that's, that's a bit of a hit. We're 103. Us. We're almost there. Yeah, we, we sat 50, 60 last year. It's, it's a lot more competitive this year, but make sure you are doing your part. Um, thank you all who are. And go, go, Guardians, go.